as most of you guys know, mo um, Club Shay Shay, Shannon Sharp's um, amazing podcast series that essentially got his big look via the Cat Williams interview has now become the de facto place where people tell their truths, where they lay bare exactly what's going on with their lives in the industry and the role they play, blah, -de blah, blah, blah. One person who I was really looking forward to hearing from was Monique. Monique has a really interesting story because a lot of her backlash in the media or in culture has stemmed from what I thought was a pretty standard, um, you know, argument or pretty standard issue. I didn't really understand why people were really getting their nose put into bent out of shape because of what Monique said. If you don't know, um, think back to like 2021, 2022, Monique had a bit of a spat with Netflix because at the time she was trying to film a Netflix special and she was proposed a deal that she felt wasn't matching her value. And I think the reason why it was a big issue is because at the same time that she was trying to get a Netflix deal, um, what's her name? Amy Schumer got one. And we all know Amy Schumer isn't that funny, really. And her specials have been pretty lackluster. But she got a special um, deal by um, Netflix for the high, high millions. Now, somebody could argue and say, yeah, but Amy Schumer is way more popular than Monique. Fair enough. No problem. Let's say Amy Schumer is more famous. But I think Amy Schumer's deal, if I'm not mistaken, was somewhere within the 10 to 20 million. And then I think Monique got offered a deal that was like 500,000. Obviously, that disparity is way too much. Um, if Monique is not as famous as Amy Schumer, but she definitely is worth more than 500,000. Monique complained about it. She spoke about it online. She spoke about how Netflix were trying to like, you know, blackball her, were trying to lowball her. Um, the, 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 the kind of, you know, the, the drama of it back behind the scenes and the people that are kind of talking in her ear. And then, of course, in like the melee of all that stuff, for some reason, these rumors started circulating. Oh, Monique is hard to work with. Monique is difficult. Monique is an angry black woman. All these weird um, rumors started to pop up out of the place to essentially um, take away her argument and make it seem like she was just complaining for complaining's sake. Now, even if Monique is difficult to work with, even if Monique is a bitch, even if Monique is a real pain in the ass, what does it matter if somebody's trying to get their value? If, one, if somebody's trying to make sure that they get the correct fee, they get the correct pay. Because I know from my experience, again, I haven't, I haven't had the opportunity yet to have these big deals thrown at me. But I know from just working, from just working a normal job, when you find out, especially if you're there still, but sometimes it happens after you left the job, which is probably the best for you. But sometimes when you find out after you've left a certain job that a person that was working in the same team as you, who maybe did less than you, was making more than you, that feeling can never leave you. It never leaves you. And sometimes it will change you forever. It will make you into a beast when it comes to negotiating um, your pay, when it comes to your next job. But that initial feeling when you find out that somebody that was doing exactly the same job as you, maybe not to the, the, the high standards that you were doing it, was getting paid way more than what you were getting paid, it fucking hurts. Even with this when it's a nine to five so i can't imagine how much it hurts when you're a creative when you're an entertainer and you see someone like amy schumer who by all accounts isn't that funny right it's pretty mediocre what she does and she gets paid 10 to 20 million and you're getting offered five hundred thousand, and you're being made to feel like you should be happy about it anyway that happened and i think naively monique tried to tried to reach out to some of her industry friends she tried to reach out to industry friends behind the scene one of them being kevin hart to try and get some help and i think she realized quite quickly that even though people like to talk about helping like to talk about being an aide like to talk about holding people's hands and helping them through the industry what you've seen i think i think it's more so in like black american hollywood but i think it also applies to everywhere around the world especially when it comes to minorities we always feel like we have to protect our position we always feel like we have to protect our connects. So when somebody's ruffling too many feathers and being a little bit too confrontate, no, too controversial, is being a little bit too outspoken, sometimes we want to step away because we want to make sure the massa knows, oh, I'm not like her. I might be black, but I'm not like Monique. So I think Monique realized that quite quickly when she was asking people for help, black individuals, especially prominent people in the industry like Kevin Hart, hey, can you help me? And then they kind of, you know, did the old, yeah, I can help, but I can't really because they didn't want to be associated with her and get that stink. So I'm going to play a, a clip for you here from of Monique talking about Kevin Hart and how Kevin Hart did her dirty because I feel like this is a really sad indictment of what the actual industry is actually like and how hard it is to navigate. Let me play the clip for you now so you can hear what she's saying. Kevin Hart. Now, you know when Cat Williams said gatekeepers? Yeah. Kevin Hart, mm -hmm. I do his um, podcast. Yes. 
And I want y'all to re-listen to the podcast so you can hear it for yourself. When he first comes on, he says, you're like my mother. You're like my aunt. You're like my sister. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then we do the podcast. We speak about the Tyler Perry situation. Oprah Winfrey, he said, I don't really know Oprah, but I'm going to reach out to Tyler. I appreciate that. Kevin kept his word. He reached out to Tyler Perry. Kevin Hart called me back about maybe a week or so later. He said, Mo, I talked to Tyler. He said he don't want to revisit it. He said, but I tell you what, let's move past that, Mo. Let's just move past that and let's just do great things. So whatever That's you, what Kevin said. I want you to hear me, Kevin Hart. Let's move past that, Mo. Let's do some great things together. Don't even worry about it. Whatever y'all want to do, I will partner with you. I'll executive produce with you. You just let me know what you want to do. Now, let me say that before we go any further, because okay. I want to make sure I give Kevin Hart his proper credit. When my family was up against the wall, Kevin Hart wrote us a check and said, here you go. We're forever grateful for that. When we were able to give it back, we said, brother, we appreciate you with some interest on top because I don't ever want nobody to think like me and my husband. Yeah, yeah. So I want to make sure I put that out there. That was, that brother really helped us out when we needed to be helped out. Then when he came back with, I got you. I didn't ask Kevin Hart to do anything. He said, I'll executive produce. I'll partner with you. I said, good shit, Kevin, because we're in a deal with Endemol and we're trying to get our talk show back. Mo, whatever it is, I got you. Now, Kevin Hart is one of the biggest entertainers right now in the world. Correct. right? And was then. We got off the phone with Kevin Hart. We called in the mall immediately and said, Kevin Hart said, whatever we want to do, he got us. He's going to partner executive use. They was like, oh, this is incredible because when you put Kevin Hart name on it, you it's already know what it is. Correct. Two weeks go by. We get a call from in the mall. Endemol says, we just got a call from Kevin Hart's manager, Dave <laughs> Becky. And Dave Becky said, Kevin doesn't want anything to do with Monique. Jesus So whatever Christ. she told y'all, he doesn't want to do anything with her, nothing. You know, he doesn't want any any kind of relationship with Monique. So what changed between the two weeks and when, and, and plus he gave your check, you gave the money back, then said he would partner with you, executive produce, whatever you need, Mo, hey, we got you. So what transpired or what do you think transpired between then that two that two week period. Well, soon as we got off the phone and they told us what Kevin manager David Becky said, I called Kevin Hart immediately. I said, "Hey, baby, we just got off the phone with Endemol, and they said Dave Becky called them up and said you don't want anything to do with me." He said, "Mo, that's that's a miscommunication. I can tell you right now." I said, "Wait a minute, are you okay though with this white man calling them up?" Getting in between our relationship at something you said, he said, Mo, I'm, that's a miscommunication and we're going to talk Tuesday. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's a miscommunication. That was two years ago. If you talk to him, I talk to him. Jesus I've Christ. never talked back to Kevin Hart again. Wow. So that's what we're faced with. When you allow somebody to come in between a relationship with a woman that you said, I'm like your mother, mm -hmm. you said, I'm like these things. I didn't ask you for that. So everything that that baby was saying, sitting here, everything he was saying was on the up and up. Because when you hear people say, get the anger out your heart. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, no one's saying he's lying. Mm -hmm. No one ever said I was lying. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to discount and devalue because of what we look like. Now. I've got some people in the stream chat. Thank you for the comments here. I see you, Koila. Um, big up, Sir Easy Tiger. Hope you're well, my friend. Um, I see you, Shay's Cow. I see you, Screw32. Um, you're all correct. Monique isn't the best narrator. She's not the best narrator. But I think that's what lends more value, lends more credence, lends more truth to what she's saying. Because Monique is such a divisive personality herself or person, I think it lends more credence to it because what it shows, it kind of shows up the hypocrisy of the industry because everyone likes to pretend like it's get along gang, especially in America, right? There's this whole like black excellence thing, rah, rah, rah. We're here for the people. We're going to help each other. But what Monique is basically showing or proving is that at the highest levels, they're all out for each other. They're all out for themselves, sorry. They don't look out for anybody else, really. Unless it's somebody that they can really pluck from the depths of ob obscurity, they're not going to help somebody that's kind of on their level or just underneath. 
They just kind of do their own thing. But they like to pretend like they're all black empowerment. We're going to help people. We're going to we're going to we're going to platform black women. We black women are the most poor people in the fucking world, blah blah blah. But when there's an opportunity to give someone like Monique, who's a big powerful black woman who represents them pretty well, they don't do it because they don't want to give it the opportunity to maybe compete on the same level, have the same resources and maybe eventually take their spot or take their limelight away from them. And also, I think a part of it has to be the money because I've noticed, especially as I've been doing more content, especially as I've been kind of, you know, um, as I've been watching more US based content, I've noticed something in the entertainment industry, in the creative fields, you guys in the States get paid way more than we do. The money in the States, in the entertainment industry, is obscene, really obscene compared to the UK. You guys get paid super well. Obviously, you don't have the same job security that we do. In the UK, for instance, you can make a really good career being a journalist for The Guardian. You can make a really good career writing shitty op-eds for The Guardian that no one fucking reads. You get a salary paid every month and there's no real risk of you losing your job. But in the States, you had Los Angeles Times, you know, laying off a bunch of people. You got Wall Street Journal laying off a bunch of people. Like, it's a bit crazy, right? It's up and down. It's all freelance. It's crazy. But you guys do make a lot of money. So I think that money and that fame is so... It's so obscene, it's such on a high level that it really does mess with people's heads and to the point where they don't feel like they should be giving other people a chance because it's taking away food off their plate. That's why I honestly think, I think that money is so, it's so enticing, it's so plentiful that people get afraid that if they give someone this opportunity, they might take away their slot, they might take away their position. And that's what you're seeing with this Monique thing. Because this Kevin Hart story, basically, if you can surmise it, it's basically him trying to prove that he's a good guy. If you think about it, really, it's him trying to prove how much of a good guy he is, right? First of all, lending the money. Hey, I, I, know, I know you're in a sticky position. Here's some money to hold you down, right? Amazing. Great to hear. Great to see. She pays him back. That, that kind of deal, that exchange is over with. But then there's another power play. Hey, man, you like my mum. I'm going to help you out. You're getting blackboard from the industry. Let me help you out again. So it's all little things that people do to kind of signal, because if you're helping somebody out, think about it, this is not, this is kind of weird to say, but I've always kind of felt like the people that are always really, you know, um, gregarious and outgoing and, you know, really open with their, with their charity and stuff, I always feel like they're doing it as a point to virtue signal, like, hey, look how amazing I am, so these people in the industry, especially black people, who are all like, I'm going to help black people, I'm going to uplift black voices, it's obviously a good thing that they're doing it, because I'm sure there are some people that are going to benefit from their platform being uplifted, from getting a nice look on them, from being associated with somebody super huge. But it does way more for the person that's offering the help because it makes you look like a saint. It makes you look like the savior. You are Jesus. You've come back to kind of, you know, help your people. You're reaching backwards. You're hope holding the doors open. You're getting rid of the gatekeepers. It makes you the main dog, Dan Gorgan. Do you know what I mean? It makes you the fucking capo. That's what it actually does. It's less about helping them and it's more about signaling how much of an amazing person you are. That's kind of what they're doing. So in this story, again, you cannot believe Monique. You can think Monique is a bitch. You can think Monique doesn't negotiate properly. You can think Monique's husband is taking advantage of her. That All those things could be true. But the other thing that is true as well is that people have seen her plight. They've seen her struggle in the industry. And instead of helping like legitimately, they are trying to use it as opportunity to signal to Massa that they're not like her. Or if they do help, they want to make sure they help loudly so everybody knows that the person responsible for helping Monique and getting her where she needs to get to is XYZ person. That's the really slimy shit about it. Because again, I'm not doubting. I don't believe for one moment that Monique is always the perfect angel in all her stories. I don't believe that she's always the perfect victim in all her stories. No way, no, no way, Jose. There's always two sides to every story, maybe even three. But at the heart of it is people noticing in that kind of black entertainment industry thing, somebody's struggling to maneuver in the industry. I'm going to help them out to help myself or I'm going to make sure people know I'm not like her because I don't want to get blackboard like how she's got blackboard.